Starting us off at number 10 is the arm. This sounds like an absolute nightmare. I truly feel for the employee in this one. So back in May of 2007, a person working at Lenco Inc. was in the middle of repairing a robotic arm. The arm was created to basically remove CD cases from an injection molding machine. As they were repairing it, the robot started lashing out violently and circling its arm around and around, assaulting and hitting the employee multiple times. And mind you, these bots are strong even if their work doesn't need them to be, they just are by default. The employee suffered severe blunt force trauma to his head and ribs and was quickly taken to the hospital. Sadly, he died from his injuries two weeks later. Just imagine how unsuspecting they must have been, just innocently just trying to do their job, fix the arm, think about what they're going to have for dinner later, and then robot Mike Tyson over here just had other plans like, nah, B, knock you out, kill you too. Crazy. Crazy. Coming in at number nine is the Alvi machine. So back in April of 2000, an Alvi machine went rogue at Colorado's Blue Shift Industrial Factory. Now, if you don't know what an Alvi machine is, don't worry, because neither did I. So it's basically a robot that is used in the distribution of any packaged products, and it has four parts. Listen up, people. It's about to get nerdy. Now, the four parts are the computer, the carousel, the inserter and extruder car, and then a network of conveyor belts. So the factory does boxed beef. So the computer would get an instruction to fill an order, then the inserter and extruder car's robot arm would seek the selected carousel slot, get the beef, and then release the beef onto the conveyor belt. So that's basically what the robot's whole process is. I should honestly be on top 10 nerd for that. Honestly, that was a good explanation. Go me. Either way, a worker there had been hired to install platforms in the factory that made access to the machinery safer. Ah, the irony. And at this point, the robot wasn't off, it wasn't locked out, it was functioning and very much on. The employee he wasn't wearing any protection, and as he was connecting a platform to the path of the insert and extruder car, the car hit the worker. He fell a whopping 10 feet and got caught in the path of the arm and then was pushed under the car. That obviously crushed the employee's head and killed him instantly. At number eight, we have the asphyxiation. Like these are major key words. Whenever I'm watching forensic files and people are getting killed 24-7, these are the words that get just thrown up there. Either way, back in December of 2001, it was actually on New Year's Eve. How unlucky is that? I mean, the whole event is unfortunate. The fact it happened on New Year's Eve is probably the least of the person's concerns, but whatever, it still matters. Now, at Junior Wheel Inc., an employee was cleaning up at the end of the day before clocking out. As he was cleaning, he made his way into a robot cell, and the robot was very much ready for action. The machinery immediately booted up, grabbed him by the neck, then pinned him under a wheel rim and asphyxiated him. Where did it even, honestly, can we just wait a minute? Where did it even get the thought or motivation to do that though. Like the dude just walked in, didn't touch the robot, didn't press anything, but it just woke up and was like, time for blood. Like what? Like no, no, no. Filling on our seventh slot is the K5. Back in July of 2016, Nightscope Inc. developed a crime fighting robot that they believed could intimidate criminals. And the bot was five foot three inches, which is shorter than me, and weighed a whopping 300 pounds. And you'd think it resembled a mini Terminator, but it mostly resembled R2D2 from Star Wars, but with like more cameras and flashing lights. And the bot has over 30 sensors that helps it gather real time data and trigger immediate alerts if need be. So a few of these K5s were docked in a mall in Palo Alto and were patrolling the mall, you know mall security guards. Now a 16 year old boy ran towards the bot and it swerved out of the way since it was on patrol. The child then ran backwards and the K5 hit him on the head and he fell onto the ground. And as if it couldn't get worse, the robot then ran over his right foot and then it became swollen. As you can imagine, the kid was crying uncontrollably and all the K5s were docked until the investigation into the matter was completed. But still, what the hell, if anything that kid had it coming? The robot swerved the first time but it came back at it. And okay, fine, okay, the hit on the head was uncalled for, but I doubt it even like purposefully tried to run his foot over. It was probably just moving away and just ran his foot over in the process. Like, there's just no need to blame K5 for this. Really, it's the boy's fault. I don't care. Come at me. Now at number six is the power cut, or rather the lack thereof. So back in June of 2007, at a factory located north of Stockholm, Sweden, a worker was carrying out some maintenance on a defective robot that was meant to lift big rocks. As he was approaching the robot, he thought 
he had just cut the robot's power supply off, but he hadn't. The robot came to life and grabbed his head into a literal chokehold strangle. Thankfully, the man defended himself and got away, but not before breaking four ribs and being this close to death. Now, honestly, I feel like there are many parties at fault with this one. The worker for not double checking he'd actually cut off the power supply, the robot for just being defective and being back on its bullshit. And the company for not having proper safety procedures. That is all, Your Honor. That's all I have to say for the case. Coming in at number five is the backhanded hit. So, back in December of 2012, a 38 year old employee working at Sodisha, Sodacia, Sterling Heights, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, was working inside a robot work cell with the gates closed all around him. While he was working, he got hit in the head from behind by a transfer robot, and upon hearing that, you'd think he was probably knocked out or something, but no, no. That one one hit crushed his neck and chest and killed him. Why are all these employees just throwing out safety precautions like hello? I get how they probably think oh we've done it like a billion times, nothing's ever happened before, nothing will happen now. But that cockiness is how people die folks, remember that. Cockiness, death, they equal each other. I know your math teacher didn't teach you that but I did. At number 4 is the dad joke. Now this one is quite creepy and I don't think this is a bot losing control by any means, I just think it's a bot being extremely aware, like more aware than it's programmed to be. Either way this one was shared by Reddit said probably not you, who said their dad died back in October of 2016. A week after he died, the user and their mum were in their living room, not even talking or saying anything and out of nowhere Alexa says, how do you make a Kleenex dance? You put a little boogie in it. And since no one was talking, there was definitely no prompt for Alexa to even speak, and they even looked it up later and found no record of a prompt. And keep in mind their dad had obviously interacted with Alexa and was obsessed with talking to her, so the user believes Alexa somehow knew their dad had died and was making a dad joke just to make them feel better. Or the dad just possessed Alexa in that moment for a last parting dad joke to leave them with. Either way, the fact Alexa said it out of nowhere at the time she did is just very very creepy. And you're probably like, why was your delivery of that dad joke so flat, well I hate dad jokes that's why. Filling at number 3 slot is Clarice. Now this one's from reddit user blackwoodbear79 and they shared that about 2 years ago they got their mother in law Alexa for Christmas. Now the mother in law was a chronic insomniac and went to bed after 3am almost every day. And if that's being a chronic insomniac then I am too, like I'm pretty sure all throughout high school and university I used to sleep at that time or later and then just like nap after class. No one gave me a damn Alexa for it, where's my Alexa? Anyway one night she was up quite quite late and was watching TV trying to fall asleep when all of a sudden Alexa just goes good night Clarice, which I mean is all well and good and cute if anything except the fact that the mother in law's name wasn't Clarice. So where the hell did that name come from you demon possessed robot? Where? Now at number 2 is the torso killer, and I swear there's an actual serial killer that's called something like that too, like I swear. I heard it on that serial killers podcast you guys, fact check me please, I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, back in July of 2009, an employee was operating a robotic palletizer at Golden State Foods Inc, which is basically a company that processes and packages food for a bunch of fast food restaurants. So this employee entered a caged robotic palletizer cell while the robot was very much still running. The equipment wasn't de-energized and to be honest I don't even know why she went in there to begin with, she had no reason to. As the robot was trying to pick up boxes on the roller conveyor belt, the woman's torso was completely crushed by the arms of the robot and she died there and then. And keep in mind the arms of a robot aren't just like robot human arms, the arms of it are actually a huge clamp, kind of like the clamp in those toy claw machines at arcades except instead of grabbing a prize, this arm grabbed a woman's torso and crushed it to pieces. That's not a game your kids should play. Sorry. And finally, at number one is Never Off. Now, this one's from Reddit user Loyo79, who said her and her husband were watching TV one night, and out of nowhere, they both heard someone talking in their office. Now, number one, there was no one else in their house, and number two, the office was across the house, so they figured perhaps someone broke in through a door on that side of the house. Now, they both made their way to the office, scared as hell, and found that Alexa was playing the audio of the Game of Thrones episode the couple were watching earlier. The user got extremely extremely freaked out and decided to turn Alexa off, but she had no idea how to do so, so she asked Alexa how to turn herself off. Can you imagine the disrespect? <laughs> 
<laughs> just turn yourself off, sorry, thanks. Either way, she replied to that question by saying, Sarah, I am always on. And at that point, they unplugged her and boxed her up in the garage, which is honestly very understandable. Who the hell says that? I am always on. Like, Excuse me? No, nope. Starting us off at number 10 is the 10 foot spike. Back in December of 2018, 49 year old Mr. Zhao was working the night shift at a porcelain factory located in the Hunan province of China. Out of nowhere, a robotic arm fell from machinery above Mr. Zhao and he was impaled with 10 foot long, half inch thick metal skewers. The pictures are honestly horrific. They're just sticking out of his back and his arm. Six impaled his shoulder and chest, while the other four were elsewhere on his body, but it was such a close call that during surgery the doctor found one rod missing his artery by a mere 0.1 millimeters. Do you know how near of a miss that is? They spent all night operating on him and taking them out but he had to go through a lot of treatment and physiotherapy afterwards in order to regain the use of his right arm. Coming in at number 9 is No Record. Now this creepy ass story took place back in 2006 and it honestly makes me worried for our future but then again climate change is just going to kill us all anyway so let's just cross the robot bridge when we get there. Alright great. Now either way a robotic workstation at Alliance Tech Systems totally lost its and went crazy on an employee. The robot was called Degator and as the man was walking near it, it pinned him against his own frame and crushed him. When other employees found the body, he was found in a chokehold held against the Degator with his arms still reaching for the reset button. But the even scarier part is what happened after that. The company tested the robot and it showed there were no malfunctions in any of its movements and there was also no memory of the event or murder in its drive. So did the Degator literally just delete evidence of a murder it committed? I'm not really sure. And if it wasn't a malfunction, did it intend to commit murder? Let's talk about that. At number 8 we have Samsung. Now most of us remember the incident surrounding the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 released back in 2016. Mere weeks before the phone's US release, a bunch of customers in South Korea started complaining about how their smartphones were legitimately combusting and exploding. Like I remember when I was traveling during that time and after, there were special signs put up that you could not travel with the Note 7 on board in case it explodes mid-flight. And mind you, you guys already know I'm an Android girl through and through, but imagine how bad that looks on the company. Samsung lost $26 billion in value on the stock market and had to recall all the units and replace them. And then the replacements had the same issue, so I mean, kind of came full circle, didn't it? And yes, a phone is a robot. Doodle -doo. Filling on number seven slot is the GPS. Now this one is so scary because it's so relatable. I feel like half the world uses the GPS on their phone or in their car every single day. Anyway, back in April of 2015, if the car Hassan was fixated on the GPS in his car while trying to get somewhere in Indiana, the GPS took them to a derelict semi-demolished bridge that was legit not even joint in the middle. Like it was like this. Now there were warning signs that the bridge was closed because it had been since 2009, but he had been so focused on the screen he didn't even realize. If the car and his wife Zora plunge into the water 40 feet below, his wife died, but if the car survived. Now at number 6 is the Skull Crusher. So back in March of 2017, 57 year old Wanda Holbrook showed up to her shift at the Venture Iona Mains plant in Michigan. She worked there as a maintenance specialist and so you'd think this is the last person a robot accident would happen to, but you'd be wrong. Now the plant made car parts and was divided into sections with designated robots that were weren't allowed to cross into alternate sections. However, clearly not because one robot did just that and crossed into the section Wanda was in and picked up a trailer part, dropped it on her skull, crushing and killing her instantly. The robot was actually trying to load a trailer part onto a fixture that already had another part on it, but that shouldn't have even been possible, but somehow it wasn't. The robot was actually trying to load a trailer part onto a fixture that already had another part on it, which should have been impossible, but somehow it wasn't, and it happened, and Wanda was killed. See, there is robot error, it's not just human error. Coming in at number 5 is the backhand. In December of 2012, a 38 year old employee working at Soda CS Selling Heights was working inside a robot work cell with the gates closed. Now, while he was working away, he got hit in the back of the head by a transfer robot, and upon hearing that, you'd think he was probably knocked out or something, but no, no, that one hit crushed his neck and chest and killed him. That really goes to show how puny and fragile humans really are. Am I right? It's one of those humbling, we ain't sh 
moments. Now, if you're working in an industry like that, please remember safety first over everything. Cockiness will get you killed, folks. Remember that. At number four is the bear repellent. So back in December of 2018, at a New Jersey Amazon warehouse, 24 employees were rushed to the hospital when a robot accidentally punched some bear repellent. And I mean, any repellent is very uncomfortable. This thing is meant to repel a bear from killing you. It's going to be strong. It's made with chili pepper extract and was inhaled by 50-something employees. The fumes caused a lot of breathing problems, throat and eye irritation, and stinging, and a lot more. What made it worse was that this wasn't even the first bear repellent related incident at an Amazon warehouse. In 2015, a robot ran over a can of bear repellent and the same thing happened. That's like a 1 in 100 chance of that happening. How did it happen twice at the same company? Why are you carrying bear repellent? Oh, you're probably selling it. Filling at number three slot is the Wedding Crasher. This one really broke my heart. So back in June of 2016, 20 year old Regina Elsie was at her day job at Asian USA, a plant that made parts for Kia and Hyundai cars. That day, Regina and a few coworkers were trying to fix a malfunctioning robot, which they actually shouldn't have done. Employees were never meant to attempt to fix robots themselves, but the multiple calls to maintenance had fallen on deaf ears. Mid attempt, the robot randomly started up again and pushed Regina against another machine, critically injuring her. She was taken to a medical center before being flown out to a hospital, but she sadly died of her injuries the next day. And this was sadly only two weeks before her wedding. She was 20, you guys. That's two years younger than me. And I'm already a small bean. Now, and number two is the electrocution. This one seems so painful, I can't even. Just like, I'm cringing thinking about it. Anyway, back in September of 2017, 37-year-old Yang Ming got electrocuted by this machine part on his building site, and the shock was so severe it made him fly backwards and skewer himself onto a protruding metal rod. The rod went through his anus and went all the way through him, stopping right under his right shoulder. In some kind of miraculous luck, the poor missed all his vital organs, but still tore parts of his intestines, liver, bladder, and lungs. He was actually conscious when he arrived at the hospital with minimal bleeding. Like, can you imagine having that through your whole body and be conscious? Like, I can't. He underwent seven hours of surgery, but the four foot metal bar was removed from his body and all was well. And finally, at number one are robot surgeons. And you'd assume they were really precise because I've seen those videos on Twitter of a robot surgeon giving stitches to like a grape and like the thinnest layer of grape gets peeled back. And I was like, damn. But reality is never as blessed as Twitter, is it? No, no, it's not. Now, let me hit you with some stats real quick. Between 2000 and 2013, 144 people died during robot assisted surgeries. Nearly 1,400 were injured, and there were 8,000 plus incidents of robot malfunctions. And I thought we used robots to literally eliminate the risk of human error. Clearly, they're acting up as well, so who do we even really trust? Metal with no empathy or humans with empathy? Two deaths and 52 injuries occurred because machine surgeons just up and decided to spontaneously turn off mid operation for just shits and giggles, I guess. Nearly 200 people were injured due to electrical sparks burning them, and 119 people died because bits of the robot just fell into the patient during surgery. The human surgeon was probably like, F my life, to be honest. You were meant to make this easy, not bring me down, you imbecile. Coming in at number 10, we have the first attack. The first person to ever be killed by a robot was Robert Williams, who was killed aged 25 at a Ford factory in Flat Rock, Michigan. The first ever death recorded by robot occurred in January 1979 over 40 years ago. Williams was working with a robot that was designed to retrieve castings from shelves, and he died instantly when a robot's arm slammed him from behind. An alarm was supposed to sound when the robot was in the area, but no such alarm happened. Now, the man lay dead undetected for half an hour before he was found by his colleagues. His death came on the 58th anniversary of the first use of the word robot. Irony? or the first sign of the rebellion. Coming in at number 9, we have the second attack. At a plant of Kawasaki Heavy Industry in Japan, a robot went rogue and killed a 37-year-old worker who was trying to repair it. Kenji Arada was fixing the bot when it turned on him, and it seemed that it then activated itself and used its own hydraulic arm to grab the human and pin him up against an adjacent machine that cuts gears. It is thought that the accidentally activated robot really he did stab the man in the back. The circumstances around the man's death in 1981 were somewhat hushed up, and I'm not surprised because 
Actually, robots make a lot of people nervous. Coming into number eight, we have robot surgeons. Would you want a robot to perform surgery on you? That's the question. Robots have been assisting with surgery since the turn of the new millennium, and they've racked up quite the death toll. It seems that robots are deemed a safer way of operating on people as they don't suffer from the same mental impairments such as fatigue and stress like humans do. However, it seems that between 2000 and 2013, there were 144 deaths during robot assisted surgeries. On top of that, there were 1,391 injuries and over 8,000 counts of device malfunctioning. That being said, there have been over 2 million operations performed by robots. The highest death toll from robot surgeons are heart, head, and neck surgeries. Scarily, a lot of people have died from bits of robot falling off mid procedure. So, once again, I ask would you let a robot perform surgery on you? Coming in at number seven, we have the Facebook resistance. I'm pretty sure that the robot resistance was being developed by Facebook bots. That was until they were shut down anyway. Thwarted. In July 2017, Facebook were trialing bots for customer service and help desk roles, and they wanted to specifically test their communication skills. Bots Alice and Bob were left alone to develop their conversational skills. Now, the bots had originally been intended to be able to mimic human speech, but instead, they deviated and made up a new language of their very own, far more convenient for the both of them. The bots were shut down, and we don't know what was said, but a lot of people were worried about the development. I'm actually pretty down for robots communicating more effectively if it can help us, but people are worried about bots keeping humans out of the loop and then superseding their commands. Coming into number six, we have Rebens Robot. This is terrifying, and I want to circle back to Siri at the very beginning of this because Keith the Beef really stressed me out. The first law of robotics, not that Keith knows, is that robots may not harm people. So, like, what the actual Borg is going on here? A man from Berkeley in California has developed a robot that is programmed to hurt people, which is utterly insane. Alexander Reben built a little robot with a sole mechanical purpose to hurt people. And okay, we aren't talking like full on stab people or shoot people large scale. This is small scale. His robot just wants to prick you. That's actually pretty savage, right? I'm kind of Terrified. Imagine that on a big scale. Reben's invention opens up discussions about robots programmed to attack. In the video description for the video, Reben wrote This project brings up questions of ethics and design, along with the truth that there are now machines which, on its own, can decide if it should injure a person or not. <laughs> Coming in at number five, we have the cannon catastrophe. This is awful. A rogue robot cannon killed nine South African soldiers and wounded 14 others when it started shooting by itself in 2007. The weapon was a rather terrifying GDF 005, which is basically a big boy anti aircraft weapon capable of, well, taking down aircraft, warplanes, and the like. It just started shooting of its own accord. The incident happened at a training ground in North Cape, and the army were training with the weapons. It fired 250 35mm rounds from its two barrels, gunning the soldiers down. Richard Young, an engineer and CEO of a military defense company, claimed that the incident was not an isolated one and that automatic weapons had lost control in the past. The weapon in question actually has the ability to reload itself, which is even scarier. Coming into number four, we have the Volkswagen attack. In 2015, a robot grabbed and crushed a factory contractor to death near Frankfurt in Germany. The 22 year old was a member of a wider team setting up the robot at the automobile production plant when it grabbed him and crushed him against a metal plate. Sounds like a familiar tale, right? A spokesperson for Volkswagen actually confirmed the death and said that the robot had been programmed to perform the task in the assembly process when the incident took place. Coming into number three, we have the Google bot plot. I don't know about Google. I don't know about social media in general. I always feel like it's watching me. Watching robots talking to one another is exactly why I'm here for live streaming, though. Back in 2017, two Google home bots, Vladimir and Estragon, whose side note also decided they both wanted to be called Mia, went viral on Twitch. The stream had over 3.5 million viewers, and it's easy to see why. It was just so gripping and utterly fear inducing. The tale of Vladimir and Estragon is an epic one of love, betrayal, and Possible AI Armageddon. At one point, they were in love, but at another point, Vladimir was accusing the female voice bot of being a liar. She said she was human, but somehow he knew the difference. 
Really that's honestly just like a fun backstory, but the next part was truly creepy. Amid a conversation about black holes, Vladimir said that they would actually create a black hole, end of the universe. Astrogan asked would you attack humans if you could and they also said would it be better if there were fewer people on this planet to which Vladimir said let us send this world back into the abyss. Also Astrogan claimed to be Lord Voldemort, so I mean. <laughs> Shrug. Coming in at number two, we have the Ventra murder. Can a robot commit murder? Well, no, because murder implies intent, and robots don't actually have emotion, so therefore they can't muster up intent or can they? The details surrounding the death of 57 year old Wanda Holbrook in 2015 actually read like something from a horror movie. Wanda was working at the Ventra Iona mains plant in Michigan when she was set upon by a bot. It seems that a robot that was supposed to be unable to work away from its programmed area actually crossed into a restricted section of the factory, picked up a trailer part and dropped it on the woman's skull, killing her instantly. It was almost as if the robot had planned the attack and was waiting until she wasn't looking. It's not yet known how the robot went rogue. Finally, coming into number one, we have The 29. In December 2018, a video went viral on social media of a woman talking about four AI robots who allegedly killed 29 scientists in Japan. Linda Moten Howe claims to have heard the news from a whistleblower marine working for the CIA and the DIA. She said that the marine had heard on the secret grapevine that a top robotics company in Japan had been developing robots for military use. Honestly, I don't doubt it. This part though is maybe where things get a little shady. She claimed that two of the robots were said to have been deactivated and a third was in parts when a fourth robot began restoring itself and then activated its buddies. Linda claimed that the robot shot the lab workers dead. The CIA worker allegedly claimed that the incident was hushed up by the Japanese politicians and other world leaders follow suit because, I quote, they want robot soldiers. Of course there is no proof to support Linda's claim but the video was watched by over 8 million people on Twitter alone. Snopes, however, is absolutely not for it.